Dibelang Sanbonani and hello my beautiful people, Nakila Newarapeta and welcome back to my channel and welcome to the second episode of The Nation's Perspective. As you guys can see, we are still at the beautiful Peachy Bar, which is a restaurant and bar in 44 Stanley filled with good vibes, good people, good food and good things all around. Today, I have got an award-winning multimedia entrepreneur, content creator, presenter, philanthropist, fashionista. I have got the most daring and the most beautiful, Pamela Mtaya. That is my part of this intro. Hi, Mama. Hi. How are you? Okay, thanks. How are you? Welcome. Thank you for being thank here. You. Thank you for having you. Look, girl, you're looking dazzling. Girl, you're looking Are you sure this is not your show? Are you sure this is not your show? Well, uh, I have to show you. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm really, really good. I'm just a bit tired. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm coming okay. from a gig and this is just like, my dog. A hard working I'm a girl dog. mom. Oh. I'm a dog mom. That's the most exciting. You're yeah, exactly. the star of the rise. Oh, thank the you. star of the rise. How's the year been for you? The year I decided that my year is going to start to fail. <laughs> okay, I get that. So it's got to be today. <laughs> but other than that, the most exciting thing is me having a dog, going to the gym, and doing massive music. And my other uh, TV show literally just kicked off as well for the second season. Happy Max, we actually just shot the day before yesterday. Mm -hmm. So it's really exciting to be back. Girl, look at you! Okay, okay! I am so happy to have you here and I was really, can I tell you guys, I was so nervous because I'm like, Pamela looks so busy. And also, Pam never does these kind of things. never does these kind of things. I'm literally one of the first people to get her here to have a conversation. She's literally like in her own corner, just making money, True. making moves. I'm like that. in my corner for real. You really, your corner, I'm sure you enjoy that though. I, I do enjoy it, but in the same breath, it's just like it makes me a bit isolated from everybody yeah. else. And I just wonder, like, if how people perceive me from that front, mm -hmm. but also how do I then, when I do see people when I'm out, how do I make the most impact so that like, people don't feel like, oh, I'm in such a this or in such a that. I try my best to like. Um, be as friendly as possible and just like reach out to people. Yeah. Although like when you, when you go out, it's like, it's so daunting to even reach out to people. Yeah. But I try my best that the experience that people have of me when I am out is great so that you don't feel like, oh, I'm always in the corner yeah. to talk to anyone, she doesn't do anything, yeah. just that. Girl, don't worry, that's how we're having this conversation so they can get to know you, yeah, okay? Get that. to know what you're about. But before we carry on with this conversation, we have a segment on this channel called ha Hashtag Cancelled, all right? And this is where I ask my beautiful guests to let me know their unpopular opinions that might get them Hashtag Cancelled or might not. So, Pat, you are. <laughs> I'm not watching you like, and yeah. Cancelled. <laughs> But I have to ask you, what would your hashtag cancelled opinion be? So they, they can decide whether or not you're cancelled or not. No, I'm not you to get cancelled. Yeah. It doesn't even have to be that deep. I okay. swear. You don't know how members of the LGBTQ community find mm -hmm. this and I would like they take on it. But I think the LGBTQ community probably wouldn't have been a movement or shouldn't have been a movement because it's, it became a movement because of people rejecting the others. How you should live your life, who you should love, who you should be with. It really could have been as simple as a lady loving uh, another lady. Yeah. Or a guy oh, loving another I dare guy. What you're Perhaps saying. Perhaps she would have been a movement to I begin with. You're, so you're saying that there shouldn't have to be a whole struggle around it. A struggle a around it. It should be a normal human being. It should be a normal human being. Like wanting to love another person and they just like... Just love, like, yes. just like you and me, like it just does. love someone different yeah. or love a certain way mm -hmm. and then that's just it, you so, know? So the yeah. yeah. There shouldn't be a struggle. Yes, I get like, that. It, I, like, I don't know, like, much like race and everything, but especially yeah. love. I get homosexuality mm -hmm. shouldn't be such a taboo. Yes, why? It should you, just be love. Why are you bothered that I love a girl? Yes, why are you bothered that I love a guy? What's, why are you bothered that I love a pet? Also, why are you bothered that I want to be someone else? I get that. I'm such a tooth. Yes, that I identify as something. What What does that have to do with you? I really, I really understand that. Okay. At the first, yeah. I was like, what do you mean, girl? Yes. And I was like, okay, it so should, I There shouldn't be a struggle around it. I think that's, yes. that you phrase it correctly. Mm. It shouldn't be a movement. Yeah, because there isn't like a, 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 there isn't a, a, a 
cis movement for um, cis people, cisgender people, and you know, I get that. I yes. really, really but also that. because I am not a part of the, the LGBTQI community or a, an ally that is very vocal, uh-huh. I just felt able to say that. Yes, because that is misinterpreted. Yes, misinterpreted. Guys, and honestly speaking, I really think when it comes to topics around uh, um, the LGBTQI community or just marginalized groups, you know, it's yeah. very important to educate instead of attack, you know. So I think yeah. I really understand where you're coming from. And I think if there's any sort of misunderstanding or misinterpretation of the whole conversation, let's rather have a conversation yes. instead of yes. being like, oh no, she's ignorant, oh no, she's this. Yes. What you're saying is a bad point. I think it's very unfair that people have to live every day having to explain their sexuality to people, having to explain their orientation, having to explain their preference to people that don't even matter to them. Like the fact that there has to be marches and strikes to constantly try and fight for people to have rights to just love mm. you know i really really am yeah. like, okay girl i i personally would have canceled i would have canceled i would have canceled <laughs> no man but honestly speaking your um your brand you've done so well with your brand man. you have done so well with your brand it's so clean you're so unproblematic you're just they're living your life. I mean, of course, people always have something to yeah. say. But then there's also the notion that it's always pushed onto um, as content creators and people in the public image in general that people cannot feel related with us because we so push perfection, right? Uh-huh. And as somebody who has very clean brand, a very um, and prides themselves in being private, yeah. what would you say then about the whole notion of people thinking that you're trying to be perfect for the world? Uh, perfect in what sense? Is that how I look, or just like perfect in the sense that how I look as in like uh, when I pose or my yeah. life looks perfect? What is it? Yeah, I think it's it's, it's more around the way that you look, but also like the, the way that you share your life. Because you're very uh, specific, I think that's yes. also very specific with the things that I share. In my okay, life. I get you. So people then are like, oh no. She just wants us to know that she's perfect, and I've had that as well, which is why really? I feel like it is, which is why I feel like you're yeah, the perfect person, person to, ask. to have that conversation. You <laughs> I think um, I think everyone has their their brand like focus and like what their niche is from a social media perspective. Some people are holistic beings, so they'll share family, they'll share relationships, they'll share church, yeah. belief, faith. Um, they'll share words, they'll share everything and that's their brand and you'll go to some people's pages all they talk about is like uh, men, parties or whatever and and it, it, like initially I would judge those kind of people but yeah. now I'm like I get it I get that, I get like, that yeah. that's your brand and that's okay you know that's their brand and that's okay uh, and people gravitate towards it some people love it and it's okay yeah. you know it's not like oh this person doesn't talk about church why would they talk about church if, if they don't go to church exactly. <laughs> it's, it's like not that. Niche, that you know yeah. and then uh, with me as well I think I really want to be about my my career that is the biggest thing from a social media perspective and now that I've gone back to YouTube I also just like try my best to talk more about other things you know because I have a dog now I talk about a relationship here yeah. and there I talk about I had my mom in the vlog the other day it's like oh mom, this is your mom oh my yeah, god yeah. she's so this she's so that oh you take so much from her you know, and I, I'm starting to become that holistic being from a YouTube perspective, but I'm also just like mindful of exposing my family and all the things that I love I get into that. public scrutiny because guys, people can have an opinion about everything and about anything. everything. And the moment everything. you put it out there, it's like, look, it's ours now. It's ours it's like you. There's no boundaries. Yes, yeah. you know, so you have to be careful what you put out there. And then if there's one thing that I'm scared of putting out there, is like relationships i can speak about relationships like like in the like a briefly yeah because i am a human being yeah. i have to speak about relationships yeah. because that's where i'm at I'm, I'm a holistic being but i don't think i'm ever going to details with regards to relationships because i think oh, guys it's just so hard when it is you your downfall is a cause <laughs> it's just the embarrassing already that oh. i have to like me <laughs> so, now I have to be public about the fact that I'm failing via a man. I really understand oh that, and I'm somebody who's also very, um, I'm very open, but I'm very close. Yes. So I'm very like, oh, here's this, here's this. Because when I was young, I used to share anybody yeah. and everybody. So now I'm a lot more like, no, you're not gonna see my family, you're not gonna see this, you're not gonna see that. And when it comes to the relationship thing as well, um, I've had a lot of every single time that I 
post anything to do with a man, or post any sort of hints towards romantic relationship, it's it's taboo or it's spoken about. Or somebody comments about it, like, oh, they're all much older. This is yeah. like, guys, I, I am a young woman who <laughs> are But I'm not sitting here saying to you guys, you know, yes. I'm innocent, but I really understand that. But then the other thing that I always wonder is that, and this is something that I've also been asked, and I feel like mm-hmm. it's only fair to ask you that, do you not then feel like sometimes, um, protecting your brand and presenting a certain type of brand sort of then makes everything that you do present that's humane taboo so everything that you bring forth like sharing your mom sharing if ever you get engaged and you share like the shoulder of a man it's gonna be like everybody's just gonna start like you know fuck up just showing your shoulder <laughs> but you know so do not then feel like um when you do present a humane brand everybody sort of makes it taboo like when you just show that you're pretty, when you show the side of your yes. personality that, you know, like there's a video of yours that I absolutely love, the way you're just like, <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about. I love that video so much. And I mean, something as simple as that, people had things to say and it was just like, bro, are you guys ever going to be happy? Bro, um, I think, uh, I think you're right. Like some things, sometimes it seems taboo. Uh, I remember I was saying the other day, oh, relationship. I don't need relationship. Well, you know. So I was I actually tweeted something saying partner. Please. And you don't know partner what. Yo. You know what like, partner, business partner. Yeah. yeah. When? Social when? media partner. What? What? Is this a campaign? <laughs> Is this a campaign? <laughs> this was, this was, this I was like, guys. Pam as in boyfriend. <laughs> I'm like, guys. Yeah. I even got a call from a guy. I don't know where he them. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? We've been waiting in line all of a sudden. They're like, four years, you're about to be a partner, no? So it was the funniest thing. So I was just like, so glad I have a partner. I so it that. does seem a bit taboo, like when baby I post about something. Mm-hmm. But also, I think what I've, I've found comfort in right now is just like, sharing parts of my life that I want to share. So if I want to say that I am in a relationship and how I feel about relationships, that's fine. I may not show you the person yeah. or may Probably bring them won't. not even, even the thing that, Not even Even if thing. he's missing, <laughs> the police will find him. I am not posting that bad space. <laughs> 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 And so have you ever gone to a where you've realized that, oh, my privacy is not so much quiet. Yeah. Story time. Story time. So the story is, I was once on a live video and someone was like, oh, I was talking about how I got dumped by Amir. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Girl. Sorry for not today. And then like, and this person says, Oh, it's just like so and so to dump you on email. Oh, what am I like? So they named. Yes. <laughs> but it wasn't that person. Yeah. Oh. But just the fact that like that came out. Oh girl, I get that. I've had no I've had oh, so many times. Oh my god, a live video, girl. Everybody can see it. Exactly. It's like so like so and so to dump you on email. Yo. No, I've had those as well. Someone's like, so why did she went so and so massive? Okay, don't do that. Okay, let's not do that. Let's, I even have to tag the person, like, at da 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 That is so And I'm like, okay, why are you? And also, it's so hard not to react on live. Yeah, like, yes. Do you know how many you have to be like, mm. yeah, and then you anyway, just try to remove that person yeah, quietly. It's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just remove it quietly. And people start saying, that's all for Oh my God, <laughs> don't, don't react. Just don't react, let's keep quiet. But that's the other thing as well, is that having media training when you're in a, uh, an industry where your life is full of what's selling yes. it's very difficult because you're just like okay do i do that don't i do that i mean obviously you 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 know you have the discernment and your instincts will tell you like don't say that right? yes. so you know kind of you, media training back in the days and media training now is probably different because we live in an era of social Mm-hmm. right now so things are way more instant yeah. than they were back yeah, in the yeah. day you probably as a pr person had damage control to do once every month mm-hmm. on social media every day every is a day, day to do damage control so it's a bit different so i think as a person you just try your best to remember what you're there for on social media what you're 
communicating and if it does not align with your brand try not to let it consume you it's okay to just like be shocked with like hey i'm in a corner but like just keep it moving yeah keep it moving as much as you can and i remember there's like a, 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 a an interview when i once did it she was like what's in a lot once in a while, you don't have to be crazy. Yeah, because what's what? Exactly. Once like in a while, sometimes just... you don't have to be graceful. Yeah, you don't. Have, you have to stoop at the level that the person is stooping exactly. at. Exactly. And then all of a sudden, it's but that's so harsh. Why would you say? Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Really but thing. also, the best thing is just like reacting, but not reacting. So yeah. I'll tell you the one day uh, I posted this beautiful dress when I was in London. I literally let me tell you when I was in London. Uh, it was over 450 creators mm -hmm. and I was wearing this poofy um, tube dress. Yes. I was wearing this poofy tube dress. Can I tell you, I got stopped so many times. People wanted to take pictures of me oh. and with me to the point where I went to like, and cry because I was overwhelmed. Oh. Yes, that's, that's how that. overwhelmed I was. Yeah. Because it's like, hey, you're not so good. You're so good. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. So that's how like beautiful I looked in person, like a cloud. Some mm -hmm. people call me Tinkerbell. Oh. But someone comes on Twitter and says, you get so ugly. And it's always the ones. So, no, no, wait. I was like, and I didn't see it immediately. So I was talking to someone, the uh, You may have seen her on Twitter. She's a hey, girl. <laughs> I'm like, hey, that girl. Did you see that girl who treated you yesterday? Yeah. I'm like, what? I said, no. She was like, eh, you dress so ugly. I'm like, me? Which picture? <laughs> I'm like, no, the poofy dress. I was like, okay, you're that. Okay. And we are like, what are you doing, Pam? And I'm like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I went on a page, took her pictures. Nice. And I'm like, mm -hmm. nice. But you look nice. great, though. It's okay. You, congratulations to you. Congratulations to you. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. And now she's getting dragged. As she should. Yeah, and I'm gonna say she looks ugly. I just reposted her picture and said, You look you so wonderful. You look great. In fact, like, actually, you go back, you go back to shop in your wardrobe. Exactly. Can I just buy exactly. a face for two? Exactly. So Whatever. sometimes you don't have to be graceful, stoop to that level. I get that, but you know, the thing is, like, with, with that whole thing, and that's what I was about to ask you next, is that yeah. do you feel that? Keeping quiet, do you feel that you have a like? See, with that, you had like a very quick story response, yeah. even though you know we all knew, like, up yes, the low key. Up, you know, yeah, but there's certain, there's certain boundaries that people cross that yeah. really make like, okay, see now if I respond, there's only one response I'm gonna give because, and so it's just like I've always had moments where I'm like, I swear. God, I am going to drag you for both. But I'm also just like at the same time, there's so much risk that comes with because it's not just about this moment on Twitter, it's also just about the brands that you're working with at the time. Yeah. Here they're gonna be like this now. There's a lot of crazy messy PR around you. Yes, you don't know if you don't want to align with that, you don't want to associate with that. And so it's just like finding brands that you can work with that understand that this is my brand, but I'm also a human being. Um, I get you. I need yeah. to go on the same breath. It also goes down to the person that you are. Uh, fortunately for me, I'm one of those people who are just like, yo, why in person? This is not better. This is not better. Why did you go to one that's too bad? I'm not just too bad. I was not allowed to swear when I was younger. So uh, I mean, like, I'm, it's not my thing. It's not so day, yeah. I might just like respond to what you're saying and say that's not cool or just like, well, I have a clever clap back, but yeah. it's never really like something crazy. crazy yeah. But I think if there's one thing that brings drama to people, that I'm a joke. I'm a joke. I'm a joke. I'm a joke. I'm a I won't. But you guys do that. <laughs> do and that. Unfortunately, like there is like a, a certain point in your life that like you will. Uh, because naturally in the public eye, and yeah. you will one day put it out there and it will spiral out of control. But as long as you are able to control it, control it as much as you can. So you mentioned yeah. that you um, were raised in, a, in an environment where you spoke the language. You are. And now I want to tap into Pam growing up and Pam as a young girl. 
Cam, her family and how your family took on you decided to take up this career field. Because it's not, you know, it's a very yeah. it's a very tricky yeah. career field. So for you, how was that? Like going into your family and how like how did your family take Okay, this? so I was a math and science student. Oh wow. And my first year I studied engineering. Okay. And then I changed to a BA media communication and culture. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. From engineering. And literally when I changed or I made the decision to change, my mom was like, I'm so happy. Oh, you're going to be amazing at this. I was like, so, but she's like, no, I want you to realize it for yourself. Oh, yeah. So from there, I literally, in the year that I enrolled for a BA Media Communication and Culture degree, I literally said, who is this new Pam? What does she like? What does she like to do? What does she enjoy? What is this new personality? Let's cultivate it, let's nurture it, let's explore it. And that's exactly what I did in my first year as a BA MCC student. Yeah. So I went into radio, I was forced to MC. I was like, I hate this thing. I don't know what to do. Now it's my friend, but uh, her. <laughs> that, that, like I did so many things in varsity. I was just like, okay, cool, let's explore this girl, you know? So if it hadn't been for my mom affirming me, it was just like, what? you're my child. Yeah. This is your thing, I'm telling you. But I didn't want to tell you because you're the kind of person who wants to explore for yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Want to see it yeah. Want to see for yourself. Yeah. You make that decision in the party. Oh. So, yeah. yeah. That's lovely. So you had the support today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had the support from the beginning. And I don't think I really care what anybody else thinks. Uh, you know, I, I don't think I care. But because my mom was just like, yes, this is so. But also because my family is very small as well. Okay. No one was judgmental about it. My sister studied oh. PR. Uh, I studied a BMCC degree and obviously I mostly did radio and presenting on the side. Everyone was just supporting of that. It wasn't a taboo in my family and also my mom is in her late 40s. Oh, okay. So she's also very much in touch with yeah, everything. Touch everything yeah. So the other day I was telling her, hey, I'm just busy. I'm going to a Pilates class. She's like, I've been wanting you to go to Pilates. I'm just <laughs> yeah, like, like what, hey, why are you not telling me? My mom is like, how like your girl? Mm-hmm. That's my mom. She takes me to say, how like your girl? So like, she's that kind of person. She gets it, mm-hmm. you know? And I think I'm very fortunate enough to have a parent who a parent just Yes, yes, I get that. Yeah. I get that. I get you? that same relationship with my mother. Yeah, I, my parents from the first day have been like, "Girl, you are a lot for an office. You are a lot for a nine to five. You are a lot for. We know that you want to. Yes. Like, we just know, and we're gonna." Room you into that, and I think it's so lovely to have, especially as black children, yes. where our parents, as much as the new generation, but our parents still have certain expectations for you know yeah. your life and your future and how things must go. So it's so nurturing to have your family be behind you and be like, Listen, go. Mm-hmm. But should I used to literally bully my parents to have to drive me back home in like the fastest way ever because I want to take a YouTube video and I don't want the sun to go down? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I used to be like, I need you guys to buy me daughter now because I need to upload them. And I've been watching daughter since yesterday, and I'm like, Girl. Today as well, you know, and it's so nice to finally see the things that you work hard for yeah. manifest, mm-hmm. and for your parents to be like, we're so happy that you stood by you. Yeah, that this was going to come. Yes, because I would have hated to have one of those parents who are like, no, you can't do this. I'm just disown you. Mm-hmm. And then next thing it works out. Proud to go away. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of you. You know, I've always told I'm you to do this, and that also goes down to friendships, though. Like yeah. going into the public image makes it not difficult to navigate mm-hmm. around friendship, but it makes it difficult to create new friendships once you're in the public image. No, yes, no, maybe, no. Okay, okay. I'm just saying. Oh I'm, my god. I'm just saying. I'm so awkward that I can't make friends. Really? Ah, uh, yo. But you're such a loving personality. Not, but that's the thing. Only a few people get to experience mm. my personality in its full effect mm. and when I see people it's at events and I'm just like not trying to sit with anyone because I'm not trying to be clicky yeah. so I just greet and I'm like oh you fine mm. whatever whatever you experience that I go to the next person so I don't get time to actually build relationships with people and also I think time mm. time it's very time. difficult to time. It's, time. Time. it's very difficult yeah. because it's either you're an influencer, the person is, is not, and they have a nine to five, and mm. their time is all set. Yeah. You know, and yours is it's not. Just all over the place. Exactly. Yeah. Or you're both influencers and you're working on different, different things. things yeah. And you also see mm. just you see each other at events and it's mm. just like you don't excuse me, you don't have much time yeah. or whatever the case may be. So it's just like so hard to navigate mm. friendships and I just also think like 
Making friends is just a skill, man. It's it's also the thing is with making friends. I'm personally a these are my people kind of person. Yes. I'm a this is my circle. Yes. And this is how my circle is gonna be. Mm. So me deciding to add new people into like my circle is something that's very difficult for yes. me. Like I and it's not that I don't like people. I love them. Mm. I'm a social being. I love the networking with people. I love interacting yeah. with people. But I'm also very big on my space yeah. and my boundaries and the things that I do and you know those kinds of things. And I think we'll see the whole click behavior in the in the um, influencer industry and the social media industry yeah. in general. It's made it difficult for me because I'm like I don't like being in clicks. Yeah. Like, as much as I have my group of friends, but I'm the kind of person that integrates all of my yes. friends. So those clicks sort of make it difficult to. It was yeah. It almost seems like I'm you the one by the one by the doing other, this, the other, and ABC. And the other thing about being in the public, and I don't know um, what your take on this is that you you don't you struggle to navigate. Who's being changed? Are you genuinely trying to be my friend? Or is this a beneficial friendship? Even with like our colleagues, influences, and whatever. I said I can't like, relate to so, no really? one who's trying to be my friend like that. Babe, stop! Babe, stop! Do you not think that maybe it's because you also have made the decision that like I will decide if I want to be in that kind of space that you're not conscious of that? I don't know what to do. She's like, I just, I'm just living my life. I'll take care of my right. dog. I don't have too right. many things. I'm just living right. my life. I literally like this. just go to work, back, go to family, uh, go to Cape Town, enjoy myself, come back. Do you ever have moments the way you, the way you? Not that you, you don't like what you do, but the moments where all the pressure that comes with what you do, for example, the public um, pressure, people's expectations, all of those things really just don't want to Really? No, I really. Yes, <laughs> I block out. Block, 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 block. I think I think one of the skills that I've uh, kind of just like lost it, and again, I think I haven't got to do a point where my uh, life and just my work has gotten to a point where there's maybe a scandal or drama around me that I feel like I'm feeling too much pressure right now that I don't like what I'm doing. I think I'm protect protective of my brand, sometimes overprotective, but like I'm really protective over my brand. And as I said, until then, it might just happen one day that there's drama and then there's just something that I can't control. Yeah. Maybe one day I'll just hate it. But in the same breath, like, I always say I want to retire at 14. I'm going to retire at 14. Have a farm and just like be, be a uh, Airbnb host. I keep get that house. <laughs> just yeah. live, live a simple yeah, life. Yes, yeah. that's the life that I'm, I'm, I'm looking to live. And I'm also just saying that I don't want to get to a point that where I hate the industry in order for me to get out of it. Oh, that's what I okay. say to myself. Okay. So, yeah. So I'm just one of those people who try to be best to block out social media views and just like I mean, negative spaces so, yeah. as well negative spaces that feel like they're not nurturing my brand they're nurturing my being and just like not making me feel safe so i try my best to like be out of those spaces and i think um not that i do not have friends but i just have a very small circle of friends and they're scattered around the country and hey if i see you after here it's okay like, hey, hi you know yeah. You know, and like that's why I enjoy being in Cape Town because in Cape Town, first of all, it like meeting your friends doesn't feel feel like a content. Yes, yes. I like yours. Like we should do drinks, babe. Yeah, Twenty years later, content. we should do drinks, babe. Also, yes. like content. Like you just want to take pictures content, with content, yeah, and stuff like that. I'm just like very mindful of the fact that like sometimes you just want to chill out. Mm. You know, just want to chill out. A lot of old yes, yeah. and enjoy yourself yeah. and be you and just like enjoy the markets. Like I remember going to a market, I still can't forget the space. I went to a market in Stellenbosch, it's uh, behind Coin Rock. Okay. Guys, I laid on the grass, didn't have makeup on, my wig was lifting. I laid <laughs> like, like walk, living. I right? And I ate pizza out of the pizza oven. Yo, I was and like, that oh was my god, this is amazing. I did that. And it's one of those markets that no one goes to. It was just families. Mm. And we were laying on the ground, we were eating meat and we were just chilling. And then I was with someone, uh, two people, and then they both left me. I laid on the you ground. Said, I'm a, I'm a and then do my this other girl came to greet me and we talked. She didn't know who I was, didn't know who she was. We just spoke the whole time. time. And that's, that's amazing. That's you know? amazing. Exactly. So I think I really enjoy that side. But also, I think this year, I want to get to a point where I am exploring 
my 20s more. Because with have wanting to have a have wanting to have a private life yeah. comes the thing of you're missing out on your twenties. Then I will pay this for forty. You want mom, to be that mom that no 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 yeah. I was like, oh, me. Yeah. But this year I'm like, hey, back. Just I want all of it. Bring it. Yeah. Next club. Next yeah. club. And another, another club. one. No C. Another one. No, no C. C. Next. <laughs> I hate social media. Because if you're not on it, if you want to do what we're talking about. Uh-huh. Yeah. Have you are doing amazing. Your Thank brand you. eases quality. Thank and you. eases um, just genuineness. It's so beautiful. And I really love how you are doing You really are like. Not even the next big thing, you're just a big thing. Yeah, <laughs> you're just like, you're not the next big story, you're just a big story. Oh, it's just so in you, you know? Nice. And I'm really, really happy for you. I really hope that this year is nothing but prosperous and lovely. And I really hope that your brand mm-hmm. needs to flourish mm-hmm. and everybody needs to experience it. Come and talk about You understand? <laughs> but I just want to ask you, do you have anything that you would love to share or say to anybody who is trying to, you know, just navigate themselves through this life thing and anything that you would want anyone to know? Okay, I think uh, I'm more of a person who likes to give practical advice. Mm-hmm. I'm that kind of person. So if you are trying to get into the industry that uh, we are in, whether it be an influencer, uh, content creator, presenter, or radio personality, whatever you're trying to get into, I would like to say just be about it. Be about it. Start shooting that content. If you want to be a YouTuber, of course, YouTube content. If you want to be an Instagram content creator, you know, so if you want to be a radio presenter or a media personality or whatever, reach out to your uh, local radio station and just ask them if there's any opportunities. It can be an opportunity as small as writing their press releases. It can be a an opportunity as small as being a content producer, you can literally be behind the mic, also fill in for somebody, you can fill in for somebody until you get to a point where you are doing prime time or whatever. And don't be ashamed to start at um, graveyard level, yeah, graveyard weekend, late night, you can start there. So you can, you, you have to start somewhere. And then if you want to start dancing, YouTube content and um, Instagram or whatever type of content, be very intentional about it. Don't say, oh, if we go to Stanley, 44 Stanley on the weekend, I'm going to shoot. No, they go to, to go, go to, to, and go, and go, to yeah. go to 44 Stanley and go yeah. create that content. Mm. You know, buy something at 44 Stanley and say, okay, I'm gonna buy this food. I'm a foodie content creator. Let's do a mukbang. Yeah. Whatever it is, just be about it. Be very intentional about it, and make sure that like you are about your brand and believe in your brand before expecting other people to believe in you be about your brand yeah. okay guys so nice said it but must have little tongue said it better just do it okay. oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so so much for joining me I really really enjoyed having thank you here thank you for having me I'm glad you did so nice I'm a group but anyway guys I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope you guys enjoyed this episode okay please do not fear to converse with us in the comments okay let us know what you guys thoughts are let us know if you guys related to anything that we said all right i really really hope that you guys enjoyed this make sure you subscribe okay check out miss pamela utanga on her social media on youtube on instagram on twitter are you on tiktok girl yes i am on, on tiktok, TikTok. Like and if you don't see her on social media you'll see her on tv for sure oh, okay <laughs> two tv shows be her exactly but for me to you guys i hope that you guys enjoyed this all right also we definitely not the least subscribe to my channel for more Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> bye guys